Hey guys, good morning. I hope you all are having a wonderful day, wonderful morning, wherever you are in the world. I hope you had a great day at work. Maybe this is your evening, you're getting settled. Hi, and I hope that you had a wonderful day. I want to encourage my brothers and sisters in the Lord that no matter what you may be facing and you're going through, continue to trust in the Lord. This is our best option notice the word option that's because we have a choice to choose another way of looking at things and you know especially when we see and experience things where it may seem as if the enemy is getting over the people that the enemy uses to get over on us and so that's one of the things that you have to realize the enemy can't even touch you directly doesn't have the power to touch you directly right but he can use people to, to, to bring confusion and hurt and disappointment in us. Now, I will say the enemy probably can touch us directly. I'm thinking of Job. <laughs> but then, you know, he had to ask permission first. He would have to get permission from God to be able to do anything where he touches us directly such as like with Job illness distress natural disasters things of those you know that type of stuff but he still has to get permission from God to even try us in that way but we're going to talk about individuals that are used in our lives that can bring hurt things that you may have experienced throughout your life experience now and sometimes things that you some things you've experienced a while back and you're looking and saying God it seems as if my enemy those who have done me harm those who have done me wrong it seems like everything is going just fine for them it seems as if they're getting away they're still unapologetic for the things that they've done they are still going around and telling this twisted version of what happened it seems as if they are getting away, but I want to encourage you that they are not. The way that God does things is far above our own thoughts. We think you do something, you get immediate repercussions, but God is different. God is actually merciful, and we may not even want him to be merciful to those who hurt us, right? But at the same time, he is merciful to us. And so God gives people a certain amount of time to repent of their sins. At the same time, he sees things in them that he's trying and he's given them every opportunity to turn to him. He's extending his hands out to them. And to us, we're like, Lord, we don't want that. We want you to get them. But we must not have that approach. Because if we think of our past and maybe things that we have done or said, whether it was just a small thing or a big thing, in your eyes, there may be people who feel that we don't deserve forgiveness. Maybe you're saved now and people still remember the things that you did, the things that you said, the way that you used to be. And they don't think it's fair that we're saved. They don't think that we should be able to speak about things that we did not live or what we were doing wrong most of our lives. You understand? But this is... This is the gift of salvation. So I say all that to say, sometimes when you don't, it seems as if, you know, people are getting away. There are many, there's so many different variables when it comes to souls and how God is going to deal with them. But God is not quick to annihilate and destroy people. He gives every last human being, every soul, an opportunity to turn. But I want to encourage you to trust God no matter what. Don't let you don't let yourself become obsessed with seeing calamity on your enemies. Don't allow yourself to be following up on people that's hurt, that's hurt you. You're you're on their platforms following up just to see what they're doing. You are peeking in, you know, trolling their Facebook page or their platforms to see if anything bad has happened to them. You're passing by their yard to see if, you know, 
Are there still two cars in the driveway? Did their husband, did their wife leave? You don't want to get to that point. And so I want to read something to you and I hope it will encourage you. It is in Psalm 64 and it says, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider of his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. I want this scripture to encourage you. There are people and individuals that you may not even, you would not even believe who may sit around and they are gnashing on you and talking about you. The biggest thing about the enemy, even how Satan himself operates and how those who are influenced by him, how they operate, is that they're normally doing things secretly. Their tongue is like a sword, but that sword, they will fall upon themselves. They do a lot of things in secret. They gather together, they commune, they encourage themselves in an evil manner. Rather than choosing to speak God's word and walking uprightly, they, they encourage themselves in an evil manner. You have people who sit home by themselves and talk out loud to themselves about you, <laughs> about me, the things that they wish, the things that they want to happen, and what they believe will happen to you, okay? In the name of Jesus, there are Christians. It's one thing for believe, an unbeliever, a Christ, an, un, an unsaved person to be speaking evil. But what's worse than an unsaved person speaking evil against you is when you have someone that says that they're a believer who's speaking death outside their mouth about you. You will find that suddenly, as it says in verse 4, do they shoot at the perfect? They shooting at you suddenly. You thought you were cool with this person. You thought everything was right. You were just fellowshipping with them. You guys were just talking. You just encouraged them. You guys just shared a meal together. And suddenly, they're not speaking to you. Suddenly, your name is in something. They have said something about you. They've stirred the waters suddenly and out of the blue. That's the thing with them as well. People who are walking in, in, in carnality and in wickedness in heart, not only do they operate in secret, not only do their, their tongue become a sword and what they speak out loud about you, suddenly their behaviors will change. Suddenly they become very indifferent. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. They validate and encourage themselves. They justify why you deserve whatever it is that they desire upon you or whatever they have done. A lot of time they are laying snares privily. That means they do stuff that nobody can see. This is a classic what you guys call it a narcissist it's medically termed as a narcissistic spirit but it is an unclean spirit all right but that's the character they do a lot of things a lot of evil goes on within them the truth is evil people never get any rest because they're always plotting the next thing and when they do something secretly they're plotting the next thing and what they're going to say and how they're going to operate to cover up that last thing that they did and in their heart, if you like, who shall see them? 
They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. They are diligent in trying to find fault. They will diligently be on your page, watching you, criticizing you, secretly sharing your messages. They come around your event to see what they can find to complain about. They'll come to to your gathering with a jealous heart. They'll come to your home with jealousy in them, jealous of everything that you have, jealous of everything, every laughter, every everybody that's loving on you, the laughter of your children, the glow on your face, they are going to search out, they're going to come to these places to find something, to drop some seeds of negativity in what should have been and what is a joyous time for you. When it says both the inward thought and every one of them and the heart is deep, what it says in verse 16, is because there's so much entanglement. They, you can't get a grasp on these individuals because their heart, just the iniquity and the deception and the elusiveness and the changing and the chameleon and the hypocrisy and the double-minded ways and the sweet and sour, you know, salt and fresh water. They just have all this stuff. It runs way down deep into their very soul, their heart. This is a person that's often all the evil and the things that they do, they'll find themselves like they've painted themselves in a corner. They've done so much. How do I walk out of here? They got to walk through their own carnage. But what's important is, verse 1, David is saying, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve me from, preserve my life from the enemy, from the fear of the enemy. Preserve me, O God. That needs to be our prayer. We need to be lifting up our voice always before the Lord. We need to be seeking him and asking the Lord to protect us. Lord, protect me. And I rebuke every evil and wicked word that's been spoken over my life and over my family's life today. Every death wish, every spell, every evil demonic word or declaration that has been made against me, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Any, any evil proclamation that has been made against me, Father, I pray that the very opposite of all evil, of all evil thoughts, of all evil wishes against me will be relinquished. And it will be just the opposite. For every curse, Lord, I pray for double the blessings. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have a shield around me, a firewall of protection of your holy fire around me. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my enemies. I pray, oh God, that even those I think are my friends who are indeed my foes, open my eyes to them, oh God. And Father, give them the opportunity to know that what they're doing is wrong. Let their heart be pricked. Let their hearts be turned to you. Father, save their souls in the name of Jesus. Father, preserve me and protect me and give me the discernment to see and to know and to perceive their hearts. To know what's before my face. And Father, that you give me the grace to act accordingly, even when they are evil towards me. I thank you in advance for victory. I thank you in advance that I'm standing in an even place. I thank you in advance, oh God, that I will trust you, that I will cling to you, that I will not be moved by what is being said or done. But Father, I will hold on to you. Continue to hold on to my hand. Let me never let go in despair or disappointment or discouragement. You see, you've got to pray this way. You've got to talk this way. It may not be as flowing as that, but say what you know. Speak from your heart. Please protect me, Lord. Please keep me. Open my eyes. Let me not have hatred in my heart towards those who have hurt me. Help me, Father. I believe this in Jesus' name. However simple or however eloquent, however long your declarations, we must speak and pray these words. And you wait. And what you got to realize, according to verse 7, that God will shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. God will fight your battles. God's not literally shooting at them with an arrow, but it's letting you know that he is going to bring the judgment. He is going to bring the vindication. He vindicates us. What they try to plot and plan against you is going to fall on them. The things that they speak against you will fall on them. 
people will see when it says in verse 8 that all shall see them shall all that's all that see them shall flee away it means they will be exposed what they're doing is going to come to light a lot of times people that's so good at lying and so good at doing evil things they gain momentum and they start they stop being careful and so they're going to be exposed you understand that and people are going to just pull away from them It says, and all men shall fear and shall declare, shall fear and declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him and all the upright shall glory. Let me tell you something. It's very important that you always maintain your position, no matter how it looks, no matter how much it looks like they're getting away. Don't let your obsession become they're getting away with this. I can't let that happen. Let me tell my piece. Because what happens is you suddenly find yourself in the same, in the same little category with them. Our job as believers of God, our job as the heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, is to continue to trust and pray to the Lord. Trust that He is going to preserve us from the enemy. In all our ways, we will behave wisely. We will not do back what they have done to us. We will not say the things that they have said. We will not be like them and begin to encourage ourselves in an evil manner. We're not going to begin to lay snares. We're not going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, guys. We are not going to begin to search out iniquities where we're trying to find out the dirt on them so we can go and spill the tea. We're not going to be diligent in searching their page and ser searching for that last email, that last text they sent us. We're not going to be diligent in searching out what is going on, all their flaws, what you can use against them. Don't do that. Because if you do that, now you're saying, I'm God. You're saying, God, I don't need you. I'm going to do things myself. And if you allow yourself to get dirty, if you allow, and that means if you allow yourself to do to them what they're doing to you, to get them back, to reply, <laughs> send back to sender, all these different things, you're going to have the same fallout that they do. Because you put your tongue against them, then your own tongue is going to fall upon you. You're going to fall. You're going to be shot with an arrow just like them because now you're in the same category as them. You allowed yourself to become defiled. Speak only the things that God has given you to speak. But a lot of times the Lord wants you to stand by and let him fight your battles. Don't worry about how long it seems to be taken. In our world, in our sphere, in this, in this snow globe we call earth that we live in, in our world, it seems like it's been 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, 2 years, 2 months, too long. But outside of the snow globe of our life, in eternity... Where gravity does not exist, where no oxygen, where no oxygen is, because there's no need for oxygen and gravity in the spirit world. God says, I'll take care of you. So don't go off of your time and how long and how often, but let's plug into his time. If we're allowing him to preserve us, if we're calling out to him, then we have to set ourselves to his time and his time is simply a spoken word when god speaks a word you don't put a time on it you just know it's been spoken the lord will preserve you the lord will protect you the lord will fight your battles there are people that will come against you and they will suddenly suddenly things are going to change in their lives i've seen this happen to me before this happened to me, I've experienced it. There was a group of individuals that were coming against me. I was still in the military at the time. I had done no wrong. But because this person thought or these individuals, well, it started with a person, just the virtue of their position, they just felt that they can do something. So they start to gather together and they start to lie and they start to make things up. And I was granted a rare opportunity that these people that were trying to make up some things about me, I was allowed the opportunity to sit there with uh, a very high-ranking individual 
person had me right there. And those individuals that came in, they were surprised to see me sitting there. And the high ranking individual who was higher ranking than all of us told them, so tell me, what do you have to say? Tell me what you told me about her, okay? And you saw this uncomfortable look on their face as they began to say the things that they heard and they were told. And it was surprising to me to hear the lies that were being made up about me. And this high ranking individual turned and looked at me and said, is this true? And I said, no, it is not. And so needless to say from there, during this time, being a person, I'm very, I've been a fighter. I'm a fighter. I'm a person. I feel like I got to get to the bottom of this. But the Lord told me, trust me, trust me. Don't worry. Don't fight back off everything. Be humble. Be humble. Pray to me. Pray. Keep praying. Keep praying. And as I obey the Lord, then this situation occurred. Here I am sitting with the highest ranking person possible and seeing what I realized were my enemies coming in and having to speak out of their mouth in my presence what was said. And so this was one of many things that began to happen. I did not, the Lord told me, pray for these individuals, pray for these individuals. Not P-R-E-Y, guys. <laughs> P-R-A-Y. It was hard for me to do, but I obeyed the Lord. It was painful, and sometimes I cried because I felt like, all right, guys, I got kicked out, so I'll just continue here. So I did not want to pray for these individuals. I cried sometimes because I was just in a place I was so upset. And But I prayed, and I trusted the Lord. And I want to tell you, I forgot all about it because when you begin to pray for your enemies and you're seeking the Lord just in general, Lord, I trust you and I thank you, you find that you're not even paying attention to that stuff no more. The hurt and the pain is not that deep anymore. It's not that you don't have it, but when you're just turning to God, he's going to begin to just dull those aches and pains and just change your focus. And I will say, I found out later on that this main person that had been been causing so many problems and attacking me without cause this huge situation came up like huge it was like a, a scandal slash all types of charges and all sorts of different things came up against this individual and I didn't rejoice in it. I didn't rejoice in it. But I knew what had happened. Because my brothers and sisters, when people do evil against you, especially when you did not do anything, they just attack you. While you are sleeping, they are plotting and they are planning and they are trying to do things against you and they are lying. It was so like surreal to hear the things that were being said about me and it was like so bogus and were such lies but because they could not find anything when people when people do evil and they do wrong and they're just they might they feel like they might be discovered or they just want to get you they they'll start to make up things about you and you will be surprised the things that people are saying. And I got a rare opportunity for that. But sure enough, I saw that person brought down low. All duties and responsibilities were taken from them. And I'm not sure what the end result was, but they were pending some serious, serious charges and different things of that nature. And so I'm trying to tell you, no, I didn't rejoice. And I really didn't want to rejoice. But I realized the Lord will take care of those who try to hurt you. When people trying to expose you and trying to go into your past, believe me, it's coming around. Somebody else is going through their files. Somebody is combing through their files and checking out things in their past. 
when people speak against you and speak evil, their own tongues, the own thing, everything that they say against you, everything that they wish will happen to you, everything, every time they laugh and rejoice when you did not, when something happened, your car broke down, they rejoice and say, God don't like ugly, all these different things. Every time they laugh and took screenshots and took a picture of the foreclosure sign in front of your house and sent it and laughed and, and laughed together and got in their secret place and laughed and talked about you. The secret place where they come and they, they, they lay snares is now the cell phone. It's now texting. It's now chats. It's now, you know, it's now, uh, you know, video calls all these different things it's not prayer groups believe it or not and so every time they do that they set a snare for themselves but i'm here to tell you god will vindicate you god will take care of you it may not make sense to you it's not supposed to because it's all spiritual god is not going to move the way you think and how but if you are trusting in him if you are trusting in him, it says all the upright in heart shall glory. You will have glory in Christ. Trust the Lord to vindicate you. Stop trying to be your own attorney. Stop trying to be your own defense and offender. Stop trying to be your own, your own executioner. You're going to get them back. If you dare to put your hand in, with the ungodly and those who are in iniquity to do what they're doing to you. You get frustrated and get frustrated with God. Well, this is how I'm going to do with God. You're going to find and you're going to see that everything will be turned on you. So guys, I'm going to go now. Trust the Father. Stay encouraged. Don't give up. And you're going to see what He's going to do for you.